I think obviously all of us like want to do what we feel called to do or want to do what we're made to do. And it's hard sometimes to figure that out. Like, what are we made to do? What are we called to do? And that was the moment that I knew every other desire of anything I ever wanted to do in the past was now gone. And I had to do music for God and glorify Him and worship Him. Kayla Fan Award 2022 Female Artist of the Year, breakout single, My Jesus, uh, Billboard Music, your album debuted at number one. There's all sorts of those things that we can talk about, but what you're singing about is why you're here today. Absolutely. Uh, and so we got introduced to you, Anne, because uh, Lori and I think we were we were traveling, we were overseas somewhere, and uh, we hear on. this <laughs> we hear this ginormous voice coming out of this tiny little Aww. person, and we're sitting at a computer somewhere in Italy, and and. And we were watching the 2022 Kayla Fan Awards mm -hmm. uh, in another country. And what an amazing story. So at some point, uh, we want to kind of get into it. But, yeah. you know, why don't you pick the entry point in yeah. your story? Absolutely. Everyone's interested in knowing a lot about that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you're, you're kind of uh, emerging as um, this amazing talent, but at mm. the same time, it, very quick. Mm -hmm. um, and so some people are being introduced to you even tonight. So mm. fun. Yeah. Where do you want to start it. your story? Yeah. So um, thanks for having me here yeah. today, by the way. It's an yeah. honor to be here with you guys. <laughs> so were you um, a cute baby and all that kind of thing? <laughs> I'm pretty sure we, she was. Do we, do we have some cute baby pictures? We, we can... probably got some we can use, yes. Uh -huh. uh, I grew up in Lexington, Kentucky, uh, which was amazing. I grew up um, right outside the city uh, with my mom and my dad and my sister and my older brother. So there were three of us growing up. Um, and my granddad owns a farm in Kentucky. We have 700 acres. So my whole childhood was spent going to the farm every weekend and um, hunting and shooting guns and doing stuff like that, just, you know, on our property. And yes. uh, it was such a good upbringing and yeah. just was amazing. And my parents raised me in church. So my whole life I was in church and Sunday school and, um, you know, Wednesday night youth group and all that. And um, from a young age, I had a love for Jesus, just, you know, just I think from being raised in that environment. But then um, when I was in seventh grade, I had kind of my first encounter with the Lord for the first time. It was the moment that my parents' faith kind of became my own. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just going to church because they wanted me to, but it was because I wanted to be there and mm -hmm. have that relationship. Um, so it was my first day of seventh grade school year and we had a new Bible teacher come to our school. And so he, you know, we, I went to a private Christian school. So having a new teacher was something that we just never really had. It was like right. a, a thing. And so he comes in and he just started weeping, um, over the name of Jesus. Like he couldn't say his name without weeping. And I remember just having this moment of realizing that I could actually have a relationship with Jesus. Mm. I used to think my whole life that God would just sit up on his throne in heaven and look down and just judge all of us and have, you know, all this judgment towards us. And when I realized that that was so far from the truth, that's when everything changed for me. And that's when I realized that I can have a personal relationship with the God of the universe. And that's such an honor, you know, that that's such a beautiful thing. And, and so I went home that day from school and I decided to give my life to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that was really when everything started for me was committing my life to him. Um, in seventh grade. And I was kind of walking down a bad path prior to that. And then God really changed everything for me and um, started going down a path towards him. So it was really beautiful. When you say bad path, was it a lot like chewing gum in class and that kind of stuff? <laughs> so, Probably. you know, and kind of spit wads and, you know, maybe shooting yes. a, a dove or something with a BB gun or... <laughs> totally. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I've heard it said that a fanatic is somebody that just loves Jesus more than you do, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? So we we look at people that seem mm -hmm. fanatical. They just love Jesus more than we do. Yeah, that's so awesome. So you had an experience with this teacher mm -hmm. that... Yeah, that really changed showed me. Showed you something. It just, it, it showed me a, a passion for Jesus I'd never seen anyone have mm -hmm. before, and it was really special. Um, so at that point in my life, I wanted to be an astronaut and work for NASA. That was like my biggest passion. <laughs> um, I grew up 
just being kind of like naturally gifted at math and science. And I was horrible at like English and writing. So that just, the fact that I write songs now is super crazy because that's not what I grew up doing. Um, my mom forced us to take piano lessons, like did not give us a choice when we were kids. So me, my brother and my sister all took piano lessons. And that was the extent of my music growing up. Um, did not sing in front of anyone, had no passions or desires to do that. So no singers in the family. We do. We have some okay. cousins and aunts and, okay. and uncles that sing, but no one in our immediate family. Are they like a traveling group? They're not. No. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> we uh, a lot of them sing at church and stuff like that. So you could we're put very... a kind of family band together we and have them travel with you. That would be amazing. <laughs> um, Call me auntie. I'll, I'll get you hooked up. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. No, you're good. Um, so. That was kind of my extent of music. And um, then in 2017, I was a uh, freshman, just finished my freshman year of high school, going into my sophomore year of high school. And um, it was June 7th of 2017. I had been planning the day before on June 6th, I had been planning stuff for the summer. I used to do a um, kids camp that I would put on for kids in the summer at my church and uh, just kind of have a week for kids to come and learn about Jesus and do fun stuff. and. So I was actually planning that, um, saw my brother the day before then, went to bed that night. Everything was just great in my life, you know, having a fun summer. And um, and then at 3.30 in the morning that night, I was woken up by my sister. She comes running in my room and my sister is legally blind without her contacts in. So she couldn't see anything. And so she she's like, hey, Ann, I can hear someone downstairs. I don't know what's going on. All I can see is some lights flashing outside and they're like oh, red yeah. and blue lights. And um, she said, I'm gonna go put my contacts in. Can you go check and see what's going on? And my brother, Jacob, didn't live with us at the time. So we weren't, you know, I, my first thought wasn't Jacob. It was just something has happened to someone. Mm -hmm. So I go downstairs and I see six policemen standing in front of my front door. And um, they just all looked very sad and just very down. And um, I started kind of screaming and yelling at them. And I was like, can you please tell me like what's going on? And they all just looked up at me and they wouldn't say anything. So I remember just thinking like, what in the world is happening? Like what, I don't know what this is. And so then I walk into my living room and that's when I see my parents. When I saw my mom, I knew that it was really, really bad and something had happened that was just awful. Um, my mom was sitting down on the chair and pulling her hair and screaming, crying. And my dad was weeping. I'd never seen my dad cry and I was 15 years old. He had never cried before in my whole life. Um, he was just completely devastated. And um, I just walked up to my dad and the first thing I thought to ask, I don't know why, but I just immediately thought to ask was, dad, is he dead? Mm -hmm. And he looked up at me with tears in his eyes and he said, yeah, Ian, Jacob's dead. And I'll never forget that moment. I'll never forget the pain and kind of the shock factor of that. And if if you've, anyone you know listening, if you've lost someone, you know how that feels. Um, it's almost like this immediate shock. Like you can't even feel anything. You're numb all over. It's denial. How is this true? How is this happening? And that was my very first thought. It was just so sad and awful. And But right after that, I remember hearing the voice of God speak to me very clearly. And he said, Ann, are you going to trust me or are you not? And when I heard his voice, I remember thinking to myself, like, I have to make a decision right now in this moment. Am I going to trust God? or am I gonna lean on my own, own understanding to get through this whole journey? So I turned around, like right after my dad had just told me he passed away. I faced the doors in that room and I said to Jesus, I said, Jesus, I trust you. And in that moment, it was so crazy, like this big weight just lifted off of my shoulders that I had been carrying. And I felt this peace, like I knew that I was gonna be able to get through this tragedy, that God was gonna give me what I needed to push through. And even though I just found out that my brother had passed away, I had this piece that was just passing understanding and it was so amazing. Um, I'll never forget that feeling. So the, in the days you know, after that, we were grieving as a family and processing it and wanted to um, really make the funeral the best celebration of life. This was our last time to get to celebrate Jacob and um, as is, you know, just celebrating his life. And so um, we, like I said earlier, we have singers in our family and my mom and dad had called every cousin, every aunt, every uncle. No one was willing to sing at the funeral. Mm. And my mom and dad were downstairs about four days after my brother passed away. They were praying together 
and my dad prayed with my mom and he said, God, if it's not your will for someone to sing at the funeral, then would you just take that desire out of her heart so that we can get through this you know, season? And uh, right after they prayed that, I was upstairs in my room, had no clue they were praying. I come downstairs and I start playing at the piano and singing. Didn't think anyone could hear me. So my mom comes running in the room after I finished and she was just weeping. And she was like, Ann, we had no idea that you sang. Like, what in the world are you doing? Oh my goodness. And I was like, mom, I'm, I don't know what this is. I'm just worshiping God and really just this kind of like, worshiping was almost like my medication in a sense. It was what gave me peace and comfort. And so she ends up asking me if I would be willing to sing at the funeral for my brother. And I prayed about it and prayed about it. And I felt like that was what God wanted me to do. So um, I got some friends together who played guitar and violin and I played piano. We got together and we sang at the funeral for the first time. That was the first time I'd sang in front of anyone and uh, got up on that stage. I was so nervous, but mostly I was just so devastated. Um, And I remember having a moment where I was sitting on the stage and I was looking at all of these people. There were 1,200 people there. Normally our church, I think it only fit like 800. So people were just like standing all around in the back in the lobby. And uh, so many people came to celebrate his life. And um, and I just was looking at all these people. And then I was looking at the casket. I was just so sad. And um, I remember hearing God's voice again right before I started playing the piano. And he said to me, word for word, and this is what I'm calling you to do. I'm calling you to praise and worship my name. And so I remember all these nerves just completely left my body. And I was like, this is literally what I've been created to do is worship God. And I didn't know what that meant at the time, but I knew this is what I was gonna do from this moment on. (laughs) So I sang the song. It was the most beautiful, you know, four minutes of worship ever. It was just pouring my heart out to God and left the funeral that day obviously thinking about Jacob, but actually what was in my mind was God just called me to music. Yes. Like this is the moment yeah. that that I've been created for. This is the moment that, that God is showing me, like this is what I've created you to do, called you to do. And it was a, a really beautiful moment. I think obviously all of us like want to do what we feel called to do or want to do what we're made to do. Sure. And it's hard sometimes to figure that out. Like what are we made to do? What are we called to do? And that was the moment that I knew every other desire of anything I ever wanted to do in the past was now gone. And I had to do music for God and glorify Him and worship Him. So we ended up making a video of that song, um, What a Beautiful Name, and we posted it to YouTube in the fall of 2017. We wanted to dedicate it to Jacob and have something to look back on and did not think anything about it, was not trying to get any like looks from Nashville or anyone in the industry. and. <laughs> Within a month, it went viral and all these people from Nashville started reaching out and it was just crazy.